Today's Hit Music, 103CIR, 103CIR.com. Alessia Cara, it's called Wild Things. 724, it's the early show with Rick and Lola. Good morning, everybody. And I am joined in studio by uh, folks from uh, the Raleigh Playhouse and Theater and the production of The uh, Abomination on Bolt Mountain. I've got uh, Jamie Smith. He's a, You're in the play, right? I'm in the play. I play Billy Ray. You play Billy Ray. Of course, George Vicky is here. He's directing. And also, you're also in the play, right? I am also in the play. You're also, but you're a direct, director as well. But, but I directed it, too. I'm like, you know, been... Ben Affleck. You're, you're Ben Afflecking it? Uh, or, or Clooneying it? Yeah, I know. Yeah. What about Danny DeVito? Nobody ever talks about Danny DeVito being an actor director. Yeah, he he gets, was a really good one. He, he, he you know? gets it in. He, 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 from Mama from the Train. Yeah, there okay. you go. And J.C. Lossick, right? Uh, yeah. Did I pronounce it right? That's, that's right. Yeah. So I got one Lossick. up on Susie then. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you are the playwright. Abomination on Bolt Mountain. It opened last night at the uh, Raleigh Playhouse and Theater. Let's talk a little bit about this play. Obviously, we all know where Bolt Mountain is. Uh, I take it you're from this area? I am, yeah. I grew up in Shady Springs. Spring. Yeah, Shady Spring. Mm -hmm. um, now let's talk a little about the play. First of all, give us a little synopsis of what it's about. And then I want to talk about the fact that it, it's this is not uh, the, the, the the overall premiere. It's had, you've actually done this play in other areas before. Right. Well, you know, I live out in the San Francisco Bay Area. Oh, okay. And uh, it was part of a theater festival. Um, Get up a little closer. Called the, uh, um, uh, the Greenhouse Theater. A theater festival, okay. and so it's um, you know up and coming playwrights, and that happened about two months ago. Yeah. So, but this is the first time that it's seen a full production that was um, a more stripped down because whenever a theater festival happens, they have to do a bunch of a plays real quickly. Right. So they don't get it's like you know like these big stage productions like we did here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so you're getting to see the full effect uh, here at the Raleigh Playhouse Theater. Right. Exactly. All right. Well, let's talk about it. Abomination of Bolt Mountain. What's it about? Um, <laughs> roughly, you know, it's it's based around. 2008, in this area, um, a fictional a coal mine called Opiney Fork Coal. Okay. Um, there's an explosion, and um, a miner there named Billy Ray is a, a survivor, he, um, and he um, has to cope with being crippled from the accident. He has guilt from it. Um, he gets put on pain pills, which he becomes, um, you know, addicted to. Um, he starts to drink too much, and he begins to spiral out of control. And right around the time, whenever things seem like they're about to completely uh, fall apart for him and his family, a mysterious guy arrives with wings. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we'll just leave it at that? Yeah. Now, uh, what's, what's the inspiration behind this? Now, did you write this before or after the Upper Big Branch? Uh, after, yeah. Okay, so, but you said it before that happened. Right. Is yeah, you know, I didn't, you know, this, you know, this is very, uh, you know, it's a touchy subject. Yeah. And so, you know, I didn't want it to be, like, too factual. Gotcha. But, but it, is there any uh, autobiographical or, or just a lifetime experience uh, from, from your past? Yeah, in, in you know, um, of like, a lot of the men in my family were coal miners. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up around that. And so, you know, that and just kind of being from this area, it just, you know, it was... You know, they say write what you know. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Now, now being that you're living in San Francisco Bay now, mm -hmm. and you, you have a play called Abomination on Bolt Mountain, which is about coal mining. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm from California, and, and, and I, I know the Bay Area, they're, they're very much a Birkenstock uh, rock. Sure, country, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Was it well received, oh, yeah. uh, the, the coal was, mining yeah, aspect of it? It was the, um, um, it had the highest turnout of any of the plays. Really? Yeah, it got the, a headline spot of the theater, too. Now, why do you so. think that is? Because I mean, you know, California—they're—they're they're, they're very, they're very, er, you know, earth conscious. Or yeah. at least they, they portray themselves. Well, like that. yeah, you know, it stands out. Okay. You know, and I think, you know, it might as well be, you know, um, you know, a fairy tale to them. Right. So, you know, it's different. It's edgy, mm -hmm. which is—I mean, the, the a director um, out there who was great. Her name's a, a, a Terry Bower. Okay. Um, she was like, you know, I've never seen, I've never seen anything like this, and so, um, you know, so that was, you know, she's, you know, been, been in this career her whole life, right? And so that was kind of like, wow, you know, you know, what was to me just kind of came as just kind of second nature, I guess, is not a very common thing in the world of you know playwriting, right? Okay. And to be fair, you know, the the story itself doesn't really. It, to me, at least, it doesn't seem to take a stance on coal mining, whether it's pro or con or anything. Exactly. It's just like this yeah. is okay. kind of... So There's not a what, statement. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. Like religion is, or anything like that. This is what right. people deal with in this area. You know, this this is a pretty extreme case of it, I guess, but, you know, people 
uh, are, are racked with, you know, what am I going to do to support my family now that I can't mine coal? Exactly. Right. Yeah. And that's and that's kind of the basis of the story. That's kind of what we're seeing right now. Yeah. <coughs> now, now let me ask you, Jamie. Again, I'm talking to uh, J- Jamie Smith, uh, George Bickey, and J.C. Lasek, a uh, playwright for the Ab- Abomination of Bolt Mountain, which is uh, playing tonight and tomorrow night at the Raleigh Playhouse and Theater on Neville Street. Uh, Jamie, now, now, do you have a coal mining background in your family? Yeah, I actually, uh, my my grandfathers both worked in the mines. Uh, my father worked underground, and my mom always worked in the office, clerical work for right. different coal mines. She uh, she worked at Kingston Resources, when, and when I was about 15, I got hired to cut brush and do painting and stuff during the summer there. Yeah. So I actually started working at a coal mine at age 15. And uh, when I graduated high school, I had to pay for college somehow, so I continued to work there. I got into yeah. a maintenance program and uh, worked on heavy equipment for about seven years. And then I actually went underground for about four. Four years? Yeah, so wow. I, had a, I, I had a pretty pretty long stint at that, at that place. And I worked with uh, some of the best people in the world. I mean, some of the smartest, funniest guys I've ever known. You know, yeah. I met them right there on that property. And um, <clears throat> there, were, there were times, you know, I watched the market go up and down in a decade, you know. And there yeah. was times that guys were losing their 401ks and they were... Uh, concerned that the market was going to take a dive and they didn't know what they were going to do to retire and all this stuff and so you know uh, i've seen people deal with these frustrations before 100 percent. well let me ask you this uh w- with that in mind um did jc nail it as far as the the, the mental uh, the men- the mentality of, of what's going on underground i think uh the the audience reaction uh is proof of that last night there really? were several people came up and talked to us like this was my life you know yeah. My, my cousin Tina. People got she, emotional for sure. Yeah, people got emotional. My, my cousin Tina, she recounted to me, which I, I remember Uncle George, you know, but uh, she told me about when her, her father had been paralyzed in the mines and then he couldn't work to provide for the family anymore and he mm-hmm. just kind of drank himself into a stupor every night. And, yeah. <clears throat> you know, that's, uh, I, I think it very much, very much touched people last night, you know. Let me ask you, George, a question. Now, as a director, you read the script. Um, when when you hear that uh, that these people are reacting this way, is that is, is that a goal as a director, or do you just pre- basically put put it out there and see what happens? Well, it's great. I mean, yeah, you always have some kind of like trepidation, I guess, when you when you when you um, when you start directing a show, you know, of what people might think or how they might react to it. But um, I, I I've loved the reaction so far from from it and. It, it's been it's been really good and really positive. So is it what you what you thought you would get? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, um, I, it is. You know, it is. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm also in it, so it's like it's it, it's 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 a little tougher to right to. Um, I think we all though I guess we're I like think, yeah. Like, what's everybody going to think? Yeah. You know, because this this has never happened in this I mean, town. I, you know, I think you know, you know some people. The reaction was great, you know. And for live theater, you're you're going to have a, a lot of people that you know really appreciate what what you're doing in right. a live performance. It's, but uh, I, I I would hope that no one you know like would. You're always tr- striving to have a good response from your, right. from your audience. Yeah. But, <laughs> but now, but let me ask you, as, as a director and as a writer, is, the, is a bad response or, or is, a, is a negative reaction necessarily a negative thing? Uh, or is, is your goal to, 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 to have a happy audience or to have a, uh, an affected audience, personally? I think an affected, uh, an affected audience. Affected audience? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, cool. Yeah. Now, we do want to mention, uh, now correct me if I'm wrong, but this play is not necessarily for kids. D- definitely not. Okay. No, absolutely not. What would yeah. you say the age limit on this would be? Well, this is what I was telling some people. If you watch HBO, yeah, you're fine. But you know, like you know, it's got a strong language. There's some things that happen on stage that you know, it's violent. It is okay. Uh, so what well, you would say, the 13 or under, maybe, maybe a little older. Well, George, you're, George, your dad. What do you I, think? I, <laughs> I would say. Um, if it's, it's not you know not NC seventeen maybe but, uh, you know, it's R rated. It's, 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 it's R. It would be an R rated. R rated. So maybe it's definitely more PG. Yeah. I don't know if you yeah. know how the rating system works, Jamie. Than, <laughs> it's, nothing, it's nothing worse than what you would get in like a show like called True Blood or something like okay, that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now let me ask you this though: if there is a parent that that says, you know, my thirteen year old son, my thirteen year old daughter, they're very mature. We would like for them to see this. Do you, do you, what would you be your take on that? I mean, I guess it's their decision, right? So there are there is no age restriction. At the Raleigh, right, or it's is not there like a film? 
I saw RoboCop as a as a child. <laughs> so there you go. This is a lot so of I budget, think Jamie. yes, bring your children. That movie's you know, hard. I, I think. Just just know ahead of time that this is get a little bit rough. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's but some, but there's some language, you know. Yeah. Some, yeah. But there is that, that bothers some people. <laughs> as far as but as far as an age restriction, uh, the 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 uh, the person at the uh, ticket window is not going to throw you out or no, anything. No. Okay, but moms and dads, if you do intend to bring uh, young people, please be advised that there is language, there is some violence, and it is adult themes. For exactly. Sure. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Well, again, tonight, tomorrow night, um, and th that that will end the run this, these next two nights. It it is. Uh, okay. And what time uh, time the doors open? Uh, the house opens at seven thirty. Uh, it's a go at eight. Go at eight, and it's a. Uh, it, it, I guess a uh, first come first serve, right? Yeah, it's all general mission. It's all I've general mission. It, yeah. Okay, and you now you see it about uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Two hundred twelve. Yeah, two hundred. Two hundred. Yeah. All right. So I, I and I think uh, you might want to get might want to think about getting there early. It's a Friday night. It's a Saturday night. Uh, people are looking for something to do, and this is definitely something to do. Abomination on Bolt Mountain, a play by J. C. Lasek, performed by the Raleigh Playhouse and Theater uh, tonight and tomorrow night, eight o'clock. The curtain uh, curtain call. And uh, seven thirty uh, doors open, so uh, head on out there and check out some local live theater uh, from a local live playwright. That's fantastic! Uh, but, but, you know, congratulations. Thanks. Thank well, you. Well, now, let me ask you this: What's it like uh, when you when you when you put something on paper and you spend all this time and you've basically created something out of nothing, mm -hmm. and then you give it to George mm -hmm. and he takes what you've made and he, and he puts his little spin on it. And then Jamie gets involved and he yeah. puts his little spin. So, what's that like as as, as the guy who created it the, from the idea aspect? It's surreal. Yeah. You know. I, you know. Um, I write. A comic books okay and i don't draw them but i write the scripts right and so you know so it's kind of like that to a certain extent but you know it's like seeing it on the page is like you know that's that's its own type you know of experience but seeing it like you know take the life through different people like you were saying mm -hmm. is it's nothing short of a trip yeah you now know? let me ask you this one now now and, and, and when you write do you have it in, in your mind a vision of what your characters look like. Absolutely. So, does Jamie look anything like you thought the uh, the Billy J Bill, the Billy Ray? He could have yeah. just a little bit more facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't I don't produce facial hair at all. You didn't and, have like a Hugh, Hugh Jackman in your mind you know, or anything like that. Dude? And I I've worked on this for three weeks now. <laughs> I've been growing this ratty little mustache for three weeks. So. You know what? I went as a hobo for Chris for, for Halloween back in the day where you could actually go as a hobo and right. it wasn't politically incorrect. Cold cream, coffee rounds. Okay, there we go. Good Interesting. Day. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, just don't don't scratch it because it itches. <laughs> yeah, you know, me and Jamie are like real good old friends. Okay. And so that too, it's like you know, he did a lot of consulting on this, and so you know, it's not just being able to just have him played. It's like me and him are like really invested in this character. Okay. So that's also been you know quite a journey too. Heck, right. I think that really I was saying that last night I was like this, it's taken a village to raise this thing because you know, <laughs> when when Chris started going through this process of turning what was just a, it was just a short story essentially mm, right? short fiction originally um, okay. so he, he kind of sent that over to me he's like I'm talking I'm thinking about turning this into a, a play for the stage um, and so he started talking with me about it I throw it over George's way, and then, you know, George is collaborating with Chris over the course of the past year. I'm collaborating with Chris over the course of the past year. Um, okay. Just to see this thing rise up, and then and then we get people like Sam involved on, on the management of the stage. George directing us, you know, it really has. It's turned into something that's completely different than what I read almost mm. a year ago. Oh, absolutely, and, yeah. yeah. And, well, let me uh, ask you, who, who the hell's Chris? Oh, sorry, JC. <laughs> JC right? I've known him a long time, and I've talked to him for Exactly, Chris we're buddies. So long. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't bat an eye. I'm sitting here going, wait a second. He just right, called yeah. him Chris. I, I've been calling him JC. JC, uh, Chris. Tonight, J. tomorrow Chris. night, 8 o'clock at the uh, Raleigh Playhouse Theater on Neville Street. Uh, check it out. It's Abomination on Bold Mountain. And, uh, guys, uh, break a leg. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, hopefully, if everything goes well, I got a text while we were on the air, so I'm going to check and see if it maybe it was Sam saying, I'm going to get the heel. Sammy is left in his underwear. Okay. We, we apparently we were going to do helium theater and got here and realized that George realized that helium tank was empty. <laughs> so uh, this is something we really want to uh -oh. do. So we've got Sam on the move. Sam is in action and she's going to bring us a tank of helium so we can get to uh, some helium theater and give you a chance to win a pair of tickets to the show tonight, uh, tonight or tomorrow night. Yep. Thank okay. you, Sam. All right. So it's coming up in just a bit. It is seven thirty-eight on the early show. Stick around.